What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple, and WWDC 22 is official. Apple just announced that it will be happening on June the 6th through the 10th with the assumption that the keynote is set for the 6th, but no time has been announced. Now look at that fancy schmancy Swift logo. I volunteer as tribute. Like that has major Hunger Game vibes, and it will still be an all digital online event that will be free for all developers to attend. Apple's website has the tagline call to code and is also promoting the Swift student challenge for apps created in the Swift Playgrounds app with the developer battle to the death. Okay, well that part's obviously not true, but it does make it a lot more interesting. Now there's an interesting mention that in addition to the online conference, Apple will have a special day at Apple Park on June the 6th for developers and students to watch the keynote and State of the Union videos in person. Now space will be limited and more details for that. They're coming to the Apple developer site and app soon. Apple also says it will showcase the latest innovations for iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. And if I had to pick out the OS that I want to see the biggest updates and new features for, it has to be iPad OS. You know, we had a new user experience for multitasking and then pretty much widgets on the homepage, but it felt like the OS that we wanted to see the most from in 2021, we didn't get. So I would love for them to make up for it in 2022, especially you got the M1 in the iPad Pro and iPad Air lineup. We know that the iPad can do more. Now watchOS is another one where there weren't any features that really changed how I used it and I'll keep asking for better sleep tracking until we get it. You have iOS 15 and macOS, they just got their latest updates within the past month and some of those features were announced last year at WWDC like Universal Control and we all want to see updates and new features for every OS and we will get them but out of the bunch, iPad OS and watch OS, those stick out to me and uh, maybe can we freshen up TV OS some, please? Okay. Now last year's WWDC did not feature any new hardware and I think that we're trending in that same direction for 2022. You have a lot of reports pointing to new hardware being ready in the second half of the year but not for WWDC. We know that could change but they have so many OS's and platforms and services so just don't be disappointed if it's all about the software again because I won't be. And then if they introduce the new M2 chip, let's say they do it at WWDC, they would likely need to also launch it with new hardware that complements the chip announcement and then it just feels like it should be its own event. But the biggest thing to really look out for, will Apple potentially preview their Apple headset OS, ROS, which stands for Reality OS, so developers can start working on apps to support it in the future? That would be the big surprise if it happens. So WWDC 22, again, will be from June 6th to the 10th. Mark your calendars because you know, I'll be doing my live stream on YouTube right alongside of it right here on this channel. All right, let's talk about some of the latest reports for hardware that you will not probably see at WWDC 22. The second generation AirPods Pro, they're expected to release in the second half of this year according to the latest report from Ming-Chi Kuo. His reports also say that although the second generation standard AirPods, they're still available alongside the recent third generation AirPods, Apple may discontinue the first generation AirPods Pro when the next generation Pros are released. Did that make sense? I hope it did. Now improvements that have been rumored for the new AirPods Pro include a significantly improved wireless chip compared to the H1 that could bring improved battery life, noise cancellation, and support for lossless audio for Apple Music. Reports also claim that the new AirPods Pro charging case will be able to make a sound to locate them with Find My, and we've even seen images like a little nook or notch where you could maybe string a lanyard or accessory, so they're gonna be doing some things with the case as well. The new AirPods Pro could also feature new motion sensors for tracking capabilities that work in tandem with the Apple Watch, and a potential new compact design could even eliminate the signature stems. We've talked about it, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Now, a recent report from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says the new iPad Pro with an M2 is also likely to launch this fall. The M2 chip is expected to bring the same eight core CPU as the M1, but then be more efficient with the new four nanometer process with speed and battery life improvements. It also will reportedly have nine or 10 GPU cores versus the seven or eight on the M1. The new iPad Pro is also rumored to feature MagSafe charging on the back where the Apple logo is located and it would not only charge the iPad wirelessly, but potentially reverse wireless charge other devices like an iPhone, AirPods, or other accessories on it. But the new M2 iPad Pro is expected for a launch in the second half of 2022. And we've also heard 
multiple times about reports that the new M2 MacBook Air, something that we're all looking forward to, is also expected for the second half of the year. All right, let's get back to the stories and the latest reports for the iPhone 14 Pro. They are all about its new camera. According to multiple reports, the iPhone 14 Pro is expected to bump up its megapixels and bring even more detailed images for the wide camera with a 48 megapixel camera for the very first time. Now with this increased number of megapixels, the actual pixels will be smaller, purportedly measuring at 1.22 micron pixels, which is smaller than the iPhone 13 Pro. The sensor is reportedly from Sony and is expected to be larger than the 13 Pros with a 21.2% increase in size. Now this increase in sensor size also requires a larger lens to capture more light and we've already seen reports and leaked CAD files of the new iPhone 14 Pro that reveals a larger camera bump and a thicker design overall. Now, if we put these pieces together, the 14 Pro should offer larger, higher resolution pictures with even more detail, but with maybe the potential chance of poor low light quality. Apple's night mode has historically been very good, but depending on the conditions, you've got other top tier phones that are just as good or can even be better. But the iPhone camera has always been at the top for one of the best smartphone cameras overall, so I really don't expect any type of major drop off even in low light situations. Now, a report from Ming-Chi Kuo also says the 48 megapixel camera, it's coming, and the increase in size is due to its new system. Kuo does say the iPhone 14 Pro and only the Pro will also be getting 8K video recording for the very first time in an iPhone, and that would be a big jump from the current 12 megapixel 4K video camera on the 13 Pro. Another reason why 8K video sounds more realistic is that it would also be made for viewing on Apple's rumored AR VR headset. So whether we see that this year or next year, we're still gonna have to wait, but with the iPhone 14 Pro, believed to be really the main driver for all the computing and content that will be displayed on Apple's headset, finally making a jump like this for their camera, it makes sense even if Android phones have had it for some time. And we all know megapixels, this is only part of the story for taking great photos historically, you know, Apple's iPhone video quality, even if they have 8K, it has topped the competition and the recent addition of ProRes video then raises it up another notch. So this camera on the new iPhone 14, this is a big leap for Apple until uh, they can really bring a 10X optical zoom. That is the biggest missing feature in their camera for me that I think people that aren't using that, they have no idea what they're missing out on. And if you're like me, you know, you've been hoping or praying for some kind of in-display touch ID sensor happening soon, but I'm gonna tell you, probably should stop hoping because Ming-Chi Kuo recently reported that Apple is unlikely to release any iPhone models with an underscreen touch ID sensor within the next two years. Now, Face ID, it works better with masks, so that helps, but I still feel like a touch ID sensor would be the best solution for that. The Qualcomm components to make it happen, they're out there and you see it in the Samsung Galaxy family, but Apple won't do it and I think a big part of it is that they don't wanna be dependent on other companies for crucial parts tied to significant features of their own phone. Apple's looking to bring their own modems to the iPhone very soon and they would want nothing more than to cut their dependence on Qualcomm and control all of their own communication components for themselves. I mean, we've already seen how making their own processors has transformed Apple across all of their product lines with major benefits for them and for us. You know, Apple wants more control over their own hardware and Face ID, that's their primary security platform. They don't wanna depend on anyone if they don't have to. We know they could still at least put it in the power button. You're already doing that on the iPad Air and Mini, so we know you have the parts. And if we wanna go into the area of Apple leaks where I care, but I don't really care right now, a coin reports, Apple is actively testing a nine inch foldable device for, but for everyone waiting for a foldable iPhone or any foldable device from Apple, um, this foldable is unlikely to launch until 2025 or later. The device they're testing reportedly has a nine inch foldable OLED display with a pixel per inch resolution between the iPhone and iPad. There've also been reports that Apple is working with LG to develop a foldable OLED display panel with an ultra thin cover glass that can be used for future Apple tablets and notebooks. Uh, we've even seen the reports from Ross Young that they're exploring an all screen foldable notebook around 20 inches in size. Look, I just like an even bigger iPad Pro first, but wake me up when this is more of a reality. It's way out there. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell 
ding to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. So we'll see you on the next video. Take care and be safe. Peace and love.